The Northrop Grumman B-21 Raider, the follow-up to the famed B-2 Spirit, is expected to enter service sometime within the next 10 years. Once it does, it just may be the most advanced military aircraft ever to go into combat. The United States has operated at the very forefront of stealth technology since its inception, starting with the F-117 Nighthawk back in 1981. For decades thereafter, America was literally the only nation on the planet with any stealth aircraft in its arsenal. But now, nearly 40 years after that first F-117 took to the sky, the competition is beginning to catch up. China, already seen as perhaps America's most potent military opponent, has already announced plans for its own heavy payload H-20 stealth bomber, with Russia not far behind, and both of these nations already have fully operational fifth generation, or stealth fighters, in service. Although many of the claims made by both of these nations do leave some room for debate, one thing is clear. America no longer has a monopoly on stealth aircraft. Worse still, air defense systems have matured rapidly in recent decades, and despite the many misconceptions about stealth technology, stealth does not mean invisible to radar. In fact, even the most advanced stealth platforms in the world still need to rely on a multifaceted strategy to allow them to operate within contested airspace without being detected or at least locked onto with weapons. We tend to think of stealth as a single technology, but it's actually an all-encompassing approach to aircraft design and operation that leverages a combination of tech and strategy to complete whatever mission there is at hand. So what is it that promises to make the B-21 Raider so special? Well, Northrop Grumman's Raider program has been a literal clinic in secrecy, with very few hard facts surfacing about the platform since its contract was first awarded back in 2015. What we do know for sure is that this bomber was purpose-built from the ground up to replace at least two-thirds of America's aging bomber fleets. Right now, the U.S. relies on the B-52 Stratofortress, the supersonic B-1B Lancer, and the stealthy B-2 Spirit for heavy bombing missions the world over. But once the B-21 enters service, both the B-2 Spirit and the B-1B Lancer are slated for retirement, with the mighty B-52 remaining on duty for decades to come. So far, there have only been two official artists' renderings released by the U.S. Air Force to let us see what the B-21 is going to look like. But in both of these images, you can see that this new bomber will lean heavily on the design of its predecessor, the B-2 Spirit. But the B-21 is actually expected to offer a huge improvement in stealth capabilities, thanks to updated systems, improved radar absorbent coating, and the same basic engine systems that are already found on the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter. Thanks to America's continued work on these stealth technologies, the B-21 should be harder to detect than any bomber ever, but all without the massive price tag that's usually associated with these premier stealth programs. All of this leads us to our next important question, which is, how is the B-21 going to operate? In order to serve as a viable replacement for both the super-fast B-1B and the super-stealthy B-2 Spirit, the B-21 Raider will have to be able to engage any target at any time, anywhere on the globe. Although it's expected that the B-21 will be a subsonic aircraft, as in not capable of breaking the sound barrier, its long fuel range and in-flight refueling capabilities will make it capable of engaging targets anywhere on the planet, from any military airstrip that's long enough to support it. Likewise, strategic positioning of those bombers at installations around the globe will give the U.S. the ability to strike heavily defended targets anywhere within just a matter of hours. In order to maximize that capability, the B-21 will have to be able to carry a wide variety of weapons, including nuclear ones, like the B-61 Variable Yield Nuclear Gravity Bomb or the new Long Range Standoff Nuclear Cruise Missile. But that's far from it. The B-21 will also be equipped to handle a huge number of conventional weapons that will allow this bomber to play an active role in combat operations around the globe. Because there hasn't been any official information about the B-21's expected payload capacity released to the public, we'll have to use a bit of our best judgment here. It stands to reason that the B-21 will absorb the B-1B Lancer's ability to launch Lockheed Martin's long-range anti-ship missiles, meaning it'll be the perfect stealth aircraft to engage surface combatant ships in places like the South China Sea. 
Other modern air power staples, like Boeing's GPS-guided Joint Direct Attack Munition, or JDAMs, are designed to engage targets from a great distance, which means the B-21 won't just be sneaky, it'll also be able to take pot shots like a sniper from a long way out. Considering how much money we've spent on the B-2 Spirit and the B-1B Lancer, you may be asking yourself, why do we even need a new bomber? Well, America's current heavy bomber fleet includes around 157 total aircraft, but a large number of those platforms are in no condition to fly. America's existing bombers are all decades old, and although they've received regular updates over the years, it's become more and more expensive to keep them in the air and operating safely. Replacing aging bombers with the B-21 will actually save the Air Force money in the long run, as it reduces its reliance on these older platforms that are so expensive to operate, maintain, and repair. But cost savings aren't the only reason Uncle Sam's all in for the B-21. It's also a matter of capability. With advanced air defense systems, like Russia's S-400 platform, becoming increasingly available to America's opponents all around the world, the U.S. needs to field more advanced stealth bombers to defeat or avoid detection. Now that's really going to matter in places like the Pacific, where the B-21 Raider could very literally shift the balance of power between China and the United States. Currently, China enjoys a huge numbers advantage in terms of ships in the Pacific, but it also has a huge advantage in terms of overall military personnel. That means America would not want to land troops on China's mainland, where they'd face the largest standing army in the world. But China lacks the technological capability and the infrastructure to move those troops out of their own territory to fight elsewhere. And that means the U.S. would be smart to keep its fighting out at sea, blocking China's access to the global market and strangling their economy. By using aircraft like the B-21, we could first disrupt China's anti-ship capabilities by engaging their anti-ship hypersonic missile platforms. Once those were neutralized, we could close in on Chinese shores with our carriers and begin launching sorties of strike aircraft aimed at pounding China's military and industrial infrastructure into submission. Until the U.S. Navy can field an entirely new carrier-based fighter with a dramatic increase in range, China's anti-ship missiles give them the upper hand in a potential conflict with America's Navy. But thanks to the support of America's Air Force and the B-21 Raider, that significant advantage may really be short-lived. Originally slated for later this year, it now looks like the first B-21 flight won't take place until mid-2022. But according to the U.S. Air Force, the program is still on time and on budget. In fact, right now, Northrop Grumman is already underway in building their second B-21, which means America is already well on its way to fielding the latest and most advanced stealth bomber the world has ever seen. And that'll do it for this edition of Sandbox News. I'm Alex Hollings. Please make sure you swing by sandboxnews.com today and every day for all the latest in news, entertainment, and motivation from all around the force. Make sure you click like and subscribe down below this video, and don't forget to tap on that bell icon so you never miss a drop from Sandbox News.